topic is trigonometric uh, integration. I'm going to start. The first item that I'm going to discuss is the sine cosine combination. Or the sine yeah, combination, or the sine cosine product rather than combination. To um, give you an idea where I'm going with this, let me give you uh, two quick examples. In the first example, let's see uh, what is the integral of um, sine x to the power of n to the nth power times cosine x dx. In other words, I'm looking for a function whose derivative looks like that. Well, that's your m a question for you. Well, to do so, what you want to do is uh, set up a substitution u equals sine x, right? And du is what? du dx is cosine x, so du is cosine x dx, right? So to solve the solution, going to be the following. We let u equal sine x, and therefore du, the differential, will be cosine x dx. And this is good because that's what we have here. Right? And now, if this is the case, then the integral of sine x to the nth power cosine x dx becomes the integral of u to the power of n du. Well, that's easy, isn't it? And that integral is uh, 1 over n plus 1 u to the n plus 1 plus c. And then we substitute it back, and we end up having 1 over n plus 1 sine x to the n plus 1 plus c. This is the answer for this particular so <coughs> why, uh, what is the property that we're using here is the, the derivative of the power of the sine. Because if we check this result and we take the derivative of uh, our answer, we should be able to come back with the product that we started with, sine x to the power of n cosine x. So uh, take the derivative of uh, this result right and differentiate it so we put it here it will be um, n plus 1 over n plus 1 and then we have sine n plus 1 minus 1 so we're back to sine n and then the derivative of the sine because this is a chain rule so we take the derivative of the sine which is the cosine and then the derivative of c, the derivative of c is 0 and we end up having sine x to the nth power cosine x is advertised. So, um, and th this is the root of what we're doing. Um, let me give you another example and then I'll, I'll generalize it a little bit more, okay? The next example is I'm gonna swap the roles. So I'm looking at the integral of cosine x to the power of um, n sine x dx, okay, I'm trying to evaluate that. So again, if you do, let's do it mentally, okay? If we let cosine x equal, no, let's actually do it uh, in details. If I let cosine x equals u, or let u equal cosine x, so this will be the substitution. Therefore, du equals negative sine x dx. And this is the key. 
Uh, notice that in, in both cases we were looking for a differential that is cosine x dx or sine x dx. Okay? And this will be the, uh, the guiding line throughout uh, the section of trigonometric integration. We, we instead of looking at the differential uh, dx, we're going to look at the differential that is a product, dx times the cosine, dx times the sine, or better, I phrase it better if I say cosine x dx or sine x dx, and later on we'll see what we do with other trigonometric functions. Okay? Uh, and this is the key. So this is my cosmetic break. So if we do so, now we have uh, the integral of cosine x to the nth power sine x dx can be written as the integral of u to the n times negative du, like so, and the result will be negative uh, u to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus c, or negative 1 over n plus 1 cosine x to the power of n plus 1 plus c. This time I'm not going to check, is I think you trust me. Uh, I mean, this you can see very clearly that this is the right solution. So, what is the general case uh, when we're looking at the, the uh, sine cosine product? The general case is given by the following. By the general case, I'm talking about the product between the sine and the cosine. So, if we, in general, we're going to look at the uh, the product, the integral of the product, sine x, uh, where the power will be m times cosine x, where the power is n dx. This is the general case. Okay. So, I can. Based on our experience uh, so far, I saw, I saw that I can handle this if I have a differential that is cosine x dx or sine x dx. But here I have, let's say if I'm looking at the cosine, the cosine is, um, is to the power of n. Um, I'd love to have just the cosine by, by itself. So what I'm going to do I'm going to look at cases where I can split. For instance, if n equal 5, right, I can break it, the cosine, cosine to the power of 5 into cosine to the fourth power times cosine. And then this will give me, at the end of the radicon, I'll have cosine x dx as my differential. Does it make sense? Okay, because this is the idea behind uh, this technique. So we'll start... I'll start on the next page because I don't want to start and stop uh, right away. Um, so on the next page, I'll write the first case. And the first case will be uh, odd powers of the cosine. Even if we have an old power of the cosine, uh, remember we are looking to integrate the product. So if the cosine, the power of the cosine is odd, then n equals 2k plus 1, where k is an integer. So if 
and then therefore is forced to be an odd integer by uh, multiplying an integer by 2 and adding 1. And I can break it down in the following manner. I can say that the product, the integral of uh, sine x to the n power times cosine x to the n power dx if n equal uh, 2k plus 1 then I replace it with the following and this is gonna what's gonna happen um, here I can write it as cosine I'm sorry sine stuff that I have to rewrite breaking down cosine x to the power of 2k plus 1 can be written as cosine x to the power of 2k times cosine x by itself dx and this is what I have and this is my goal I want to have cosine x dx okay so uh, that's the principle behind this activity and now let's see what I do with the the rest so I'm settled with the differential the rest I'm going to use some trigonometric identities. So cosine x to the power of a uh, cosine x to the power of 2k can be written as cosine x squared to the power of k. What is the advantage in doing so? Remember, I have the differential cosine x dx, which is uh, once you take the antiderivative it's the sign so I need everything else in the chain to be written as the sign in terms of the sign function well if I have that's why I, I said that we're going to start if we start with odd power of cosine and you take one power one you take cosine X out of it then you are left with an even power and even power can be written as cosine square to another power and the cosine squared can be substituted with 1 minus sine squared so this expression can be written as 1 minus sine squared to the power of k and once you do this substitution then what you are left with is uh, a radicand that contain only terms of sine and the differential that has cosine x dx Okay. So at this point, we'll go back to the way we started. We have a substitution. So we let u equal the sine x. And of course, um, du equal cosine x dx. That was the whole idea. That's why we want to have only stuff that is sine x in it. Uh, so now the integral, since I'm breaking the equation, let's call this integral i. i will stand for a generic integral. So going back after the substitution, i, the integral, will be instead of sine to the power of m, we have u to the power of m. And then here we have 1 minus u squared to the power of k and then we have du and we solve that and so in summary we can say that if we have all power of cosine those of you who like to remember formula which I in in principle against this approach but sometimes it helps people just to memorize stuff, you can write it as u to the power of m times 1 minus u squared to the power of k du. I strongly recommend that instead of memorizing the formula, go over the process. There are There is one basic principle, is having a differential that is uh, with a non-antiderivative, for instance, the 
Integral of cosine x dx is sine x. The integral of sine x dx is negative cosine x. What other differential we can be used as we do this stuff? What is the derivative of the tangent? Come on, give it to me. Secant squared. So if we want to solve stuff that contain tangent, we want to have secant squared dx at the end, right? Because we know how to integrate that. So this leads to a combination secant tangent. What about the derivative of the cotangent? Cosecant squared. So if you have a differential at the end that read cosecant squared theta d theta, you can use that to solve a product of the cosecant and the cotangent, similar to the product of uh, sine cosine. And this is the idea. So if you understand the idea, then you really don't need to remember a formula. I'm going to give you an example, in the, a very simple example, and I'm going to do it twice. I'm going to use the formula the first time, and then I'll use the principle the second time. And hopefully this will convince you that the principle is more important than remembering, memorizing the formula. All right?